Um, so 6.30, call the meeting to order. Um, and then we're gonna introduce ourselves so we know who's who. Um, starting with Gina. Gina Jenkins, town administrator for East Montpelier. Jamie Morby, Cala Select Board. Ann Tulin, Cala Select Board. Jordan Keyes, Cala Select Board. Seth Gardner, East Montpelier Select Board. Carlette and I are East Montpelier Select Board. Are we going around? Or? Okay. Uh, Ann Winchester, Cala Select Board. Sylvie Christensen, East Montpelier Select Board. Hi, I'm Kari Bradley. I'm the Callis Town Administrator. And then start down there by the door. Oh, uh, James Daly, uh, community member of Callis and member of Fire. I'm Rose Palchuk. Right, I'm Paul Boyer with East Montpelier Fire. Jay Coffey, East Montpelier Fire. I'm Paul Shirley, Chief Woodbury Fire. Got a couple more chairs there. Okay. Zach, would you mind making that uh, this meeting is being recorded message go away? Thank you. <coughs> Everyone got a chair? And that's Albert. On the end, Petrella. Yeah. Yep, Petrella, and Tom Parker. Tom Parker. All right. So, do we have any additions to the agenda? Uh, we're looking at your agenda. We're looking at ours. So let's make sure they match. <laughs> Can I see yours? <laughs> um. Yeah. Good. 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 Now, did you want to open your meeting also? Or are you uh, uh, thinking it's why, open? Uh, why don't you chair the joint meeting with okay. the two boards? All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> public comment. Hearing none, I'll move to the next item. So, okay. So what I want to stress at this meeting, that this is, we're not trying to put down or denigrate the efforts of the East Montpelier Emergency Services. This is a budgetary talk, and we also, I realize, and we all realize, it takes a huge amount of effort to keep the emergency services going, and a lot of it's volunteer labor. So we're not here to put any of your efforts down. I want that understood at, at the beginning. But we do have to talk about budget, especially with the increases that have come along over the years with the emergency services facility or services. So. The other thing about this meeting is because we have a lot of newbies on the select boards, I thought we should talk about the budget and all of us would understand a little more about it. All right? So the way we got onto this, and let's look at the ambulance sheet, which is, yeah, where's my ambulance sheet? I guess the fire department. Okay, I got it right here, yep. All right, so if you look at the very top figure on East Montpelier Volunteer Fire Department Ambulance Service, draft two budget worksheet FY63025 ambulance. Okay, everyone see that? The very first figure there is 15,000. Does everybody know where that comes from? Where? Wrong answer. Okay. It comes directly out of the ambulance revenue before money is contributed to the capital plan. So the ambulance revenue goes fifteen thousand right off the top. That's a voluntary contribution that we worked out a few years ago because we're facing big increases. And we talked to the ambulance service fire department about kicking some money back into the general budget. That's where the fifteen thousand dollars came back. That figure is not written in stone. That was something the town administrator worked out with us. We all talked about it. We put fifteen thousand dollars. Now it's still there, which is fine. But I want everyone to understand where that fifteen thousand came from. That is completely voluntary. You could come to us at the beginning of the budget season and say, we can't afford to do that anymore. And we could say, well, tough luck or whatever. So everyone understand that 15,000? That's just, that's just a contribution that we worked out with the fire department emergency services a few years ago. 
when their increases were increasing, 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 we're like, can you kick $15,000 back into it? It's still there because, I think, because no one really quite understood how it got there. We all understood. Okay, well, select boards do not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you said all, that's why I asked that. Yeah, well, right. okay, Yes. Here's a question. Yes. So, sources of revenue for the fire department yes. are mm -hmm. the, the four towns, right, yep. that they bill plus ambulance billing. Is yep. that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the 15000 must be coming from the ambulance billing. That's the only other source of revenue. It comes not from billing. It comes from their, their carries. It comes from their direct revenue. Oh, when they go what carry, I mean. I, that's what so I mean. they, they're receipts. Bringing, Let me change that to receipts, ambulance yes, receipts. Yes, yes. When yes. they carry okay. people, they charge, yeah. they get money. The money comes in incrementally, and it comes in sometimes years later. So, so it's hard to figure out how much they take in, but it averages like 160 or 170. Is that correct? A year? The exact amount, I don't know. Okay. Well, All right. according to the budget sheet, I think it was about 140. Um, Which sheet are you looking at? I'm looking at the, uh, the, the one that the balance sheet. That was actually as of November. Balance sheet. And it sheet. says. Capital plan budget sheet? No, sorry, I'm confusing that with something else. I'm not seeing. I didn't print their actual latest, the financial statements they gave us. I was just focused on the budget numbers. Yeah, so. okay. I know. It's around 160, yeah. 170. Okay. And we used to get a sheet that said how much they took in every month, but it didn't really relate to what they were charging out because it comes in late. Sometimes it's three or four months after they charge it. It comes in. Okay. So it's always hard to target the figure that they're going to take in, but it's averaging around the 160, 170. And Last thing I knew. But anybody can correct me. Yes, it can, it's out. It's out at least 60, 90 days on most of the bills. Oh, I know that. He's yeah. But I mean the gross figure that you guys take in on the ambulance side of things. It's around 160, 170, but yeah. as an average, that's fairly accurate. Okay. I mean, I mean, you can correct me because believe me, I'm just going by memory. As of this year through December, we brought in 97,000 so far, but that doesn't mean the second half is going to be as strong. We don't know. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so about 100000 You still have six months to go. The budget period ends June 30th, so okay. the year, the fiscal year. Okay. So let me, let me yeah. just, just to be clear, yeah. of the, of the um, amount they take in, yes. they, they used to pay for billing out of that, but they're not anymore. Yeah, we're still correct. paying for that out of animals. Okay, well let's revenue. let's do that in a minute. I, I need to understand that, but yes. but they also <clears> they <throat> can put forty thousand in a, up to forty thousand in a contingency fund. No, that's already funded. Once it's already funded, they can't put any more in. Right, so, it, it's up to forty thousand and it's fully funded right now. And the rest goes into capital. Exactly. But except for fifteen thousand, the it, fifteen thousand is coming off the top. Unless they decide to give some to operate. The other it's, thing is the. They decided to move the ambulance billing into their general budget and to take that money out of the money that they get from the towns, no longer off the ambulance revenue. Right. So that's what I was alluding to a minute ago. Uh, last year, you just took the billing. I, I, I'm off sorry. The top. I'm, I'm, I'm needing to get the terms right. They took the billing out of the receipts. Now, instead, you put the billing into operating. So, in effect, you're really only giving us 3000 is that right? Am I no, understanding no. that correctly? No, no. We're giving them 15000 off the top. But what the she, money comes in. But that? there's a new line. But there's yes. a new the line down at the bottom. I know. So what she's saying is right. you have now an expense of 12000 yes. yes. a revenue of fifteen. The net yeah. of, is and now three as right. opposed to, to previously that. revenue fifteen yes. zero. They used to pay that out of the bills. receipts. Go. So from our point of view, yeah. they're really only putting in 3000 yeah, new true. money. Yeah, true. Right. Okay, that's what I wanted to be sure it, I Okay, so I'm not... Is that fair? Okay. Okay. So I'm not accusing them of playing a shell game. I'm not but they, But what they understand. said was, oh, we want to take it out of... We want that to be out of the budget, the 12000 But really, we could have just said, well, we'll put the, put the 12000 You have to contribute 12000 on the top, and then you can still take it out of your budget. Correct. Yeah, the, yeah. The I, 15 just, could be 27. All I'm trying to do right now is understand. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's okay. why. That's why we're here. Okay. Okay. All right. So the other thing that comes off the top is the ambulance intercept. Paramedic. 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 Right. That figure is very variable. Is that correct? That's correct. 
What is it? What what was it last year? Sixty-six. I think so. Sixty-six hundred, something like that. Sixty-six hundred. Mm -hmm. Which is very variable. Yeah. So that's coming out of the receipts, um, and as they get them. Okay. That because it's a very variable figure, they don't know when they're going to need to hire. It's a higher uh, EMT, right, of some kind. Paramedics. 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 But that's, they don't always need to hire a paramedic. So that's different from the two people that you have on staff all the time. You that's also correct. hire the paramedics. We don't hire them. We might have to call them in if there's a need for a paramedic. We okay. don't have one on two. Yeah, so that, they don't know what that figure is. So they're just taking that out of the receipts. Okay. And that is passed through on the billing? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right? You agree? Yeah. We pay them. You, you pay them and you, pay you, them. you charge the people who are transported. Correct. For that part of your call. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, the, well, the trans transporting agency generally bills for the call. So we charge insurance company X amount of dollars. And whatever we get back in return, we don't know because it's insurance. Yeah. Um, and then we have to pay the agency that provided us the paramedic that fee, which comes off that. And are you going to charge the insurance company more if you have to have a paramedic in intercept than if you don't? That is all governed by Standard the rates. people that do our billing. So if you do X interventions as a paramedic, okay. it, it's worth this amount of money. Uh -huh. And it might be worth $2,000. Okay. And so... That gets billed to the patient, and then insurance companies pay what they pay, and okay. you get what you get. But if you call a paramedic, the paramedic comes and turns out doesn't need to do anything, then you don't have any interventions to bill for. Right. Is that correct? But you still have to pay the paramedic? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. And sometimes we have a paramedic on staff, and we can bill at those higher rates and provide paramedic interventions. Right. And that money. There's no, we don't charge an extra 200 bucks for that paramedic because he's in house. So we, right. we can bill that directly and recoup the cost. Yep. Okay. So any, any questions on what we've covered? Am I allowed to ask a question? You sure are, any time. <laughs> so not to get it confused, I just want to clarify it. Yes. What, what you're asking is to increase our budget by three thousand dollars. No. Yes. That's what you're doing. Oh, I am. Yes. Yeah. By us contribute by taking the fifteen, asking us to contribute another fifteen. Well, it might be more. What well, that's so the purpose of the meeting. The fifteen I just threw out there. I did talk talk, talk to Ann, mm. but it's up to the collective wisdom here how much we could increase that figure or not at all. We, we don't have to increase that figure, but I want to have a little more conversation about the expenses. Okay. Seth, can I ask one more question? Yes. Just a, a, a step back about the billing. Yep. Um, uh, for, for the paramedic versus a non-paramedic call, does the insurance company uh, require that you differentiate between those types of personnel, or is that just something that you that you kind of self-employed, uh, like a differentiation that you self-employ to to kind of keep billing costs down for for calls to patients? Well, I, I'm not quite a sh I'm not sure I understand your question, but the only thing I can think about is in the concept of you're sick. Yeah. You go and see your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. That hospital visit or doctor's office visit might be worth a $150 charge or $500 charge. And you talk to your doctor and he does X, Y, and Z, and it's another you know, $200 charge on top. Take that same visit and turn it into an ER visit, and you go to the ER to see the ER doc, all of a sudden that's a $1,200 walk-in charge just because you went to the ER. And then the doctor does what they do, and that's another $500 charge on top of that. So it's the same concept with us. If an EMT shows up, we can do certain things, and they have predetermined figures. You know, you do this ID, it's a $500 bill to the patient. You do this, it's a $200 bill. 
But if a paramedic does something, it's a higher fee for what they can do. So you, you, if a paramedic does what an EMT does, we can't charge extra. Okay. Because a paramedic did. It's based on the skill necessary to do what it is. Thanks. Oh, that's what so it's based on. Right? It's only <clears throat> so when you send a paramedic, you don't always know whether it's necessary or not. Right. But right. there are protocols that dictate yeah. what right. the paramedic should be responding yeah, yeah. to. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Usually anything with pain. The minute a patient says, I'm in extreme pain, yeah. you're calling for a paramedic. Because really? Paramedics are the only ones that can administer pain control. Right. So when you get a call, you have to make that decision. Right. Generally, dispatch what they dispatch you to, predetermined sometimes. Yeah. A paramedic, but you might get on scene. Yeah. You start talking to the person, right. and you touch them, and they scream. Oh, I need a medic now. I got to administer pain control. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So sometimes, what if you get there and you need a paramedic and you don't have one? You have to call them one in. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, yeah, that's we call one in. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it can be an extended. But we don't stop what we do. We don't wait yeah. at the scene yeah. for the medic to arrive. Yeah. We swoop and go. Yeah. And we might meet them at the bottom of the hill near the hospital. Yeah. Who knows where we'll meet them. Right. Um, so yeah, then what? You go to the hospital and the paramedic follows you behind and then... Well, the paramedic hops in with us and starts oh, doing okay. what they do. Yeah, yeah. Right in the end. Right. Gotcha. Interesting. Thanks. And, and when we get billed out, we never get what we bill out. Because you know how that works. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's kind of the root of my question. You know, how much scrutiny are, are these billing rates? They and, and um, you know, I think it, it, it's interesting to bring up that, like, if there was a paramedic in house, uh, you know, there's some efficiency there because you would have one in house, um, but then you also need to make sure that you're, you're billing the time out accordingly. And I was just curious whether or not. There's room in in the the rates for the service to to increase that, but it doesn't sound like it. It's 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 relative yeah. to procedure, whatever the procedure yeah, yeah. is that is and being. It, and uh, it's all governed by employed. Medicare and Medicaid. Right. right. It's not like I can sit there and say, "Well, right. gee, for me to hop in an ambulance to come see it, it's worth five hundred bucks, and I'm just going to clear fire five hundred bucks." And it doesn't so, work. So if you get back to the billing, what they bill for and what they get are two different figures. So it's around, is it 70% or something? Yeah, that's, that's 70 odd. accurate, give yeah. or take. It's 70 odd percent of what they bill for and what they get. That's the difference. Yep. yep. So they might bill for 200,000 and they're going to get 70%, 140. Okay. All right, so any more questions? No? Ann? I can oh, see the wheels turning. Oh, no, I didn't quite understand what you were saying earlier. You said the difference to if we took a, if we asked for another fifteen thousand on that first line item, mm -hmm. the difference to you would be three thousand. I didn't I didn't follow that. Well, it would be because we we switched over the wow. the, the ambulance billing right. is twelve thousand. Oh, because you're counting the ambulance. So you're increasing our yeah. gap. Got it. By three thousand yeah. dollars. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so just to go over some interesting figures here, and because really the bottom line is the costs have gone up a lot for providing ambulance service. And that's a big concern. Is this going to be sustainable for the towns to keep paying for this? So the ambulance service in 2014, the budget was 95000 East the Montpelier portion. All yeah, East Montpelier portion. The East Montpelier portion now, at, at the ask, is 293000 So it's gone up three times in 10 years. Tripled. Is that sustainable? Yes. But the bulk of that increase was due to staffing. Because back then, we were more volunteer. volunteer oh, I know. Than, I've been you know, part of it. So now, I know. You know, it's not that we've increased, you know, the bought trucks more often or bought all this other equipment, It's it was strictly staffing. If you take yep. the staffing out, you can drop $360,000 off your budget. Yeah, but we can't do that. We can't take it out. It's like so, saying... I mean, it's not fair to compare 2014 numbers to today when you think of the staffing increases. That's all. 
It's yeah, just yeah. what's costing the town. I, I That's all. I'm just saying bottom line. Whether it's whatever it is, it's just expensive. Yes. So, what yes. Pay staff? What's that? Huh? What do you pay staff? Does everybody get the same rate? Uh, no. Entry oh. level is 16 and change an hour up to paramedics that work for us and only, I say only, get 21 and change. But they, it's very tough to find people that work by the day, and that's what they're doing. It's not paid staff. It's people that you, they find to work on a, on a, on a day basis. Oh, I understand. I just wanted to say, so you have two full-time staff, yeah. seven days a week, so 14 times 52 times, let's just say, 20. How much yeah. money? That's what you would need, approximately. Well, that doesn't figure payroll taxes, but payroll. <laughs> and, and, and what do you mean? You have, um, that's not even benefits. That's, payroll not taxes benefits. is a separate line item. There are no benefits. There's absolutely no benefits. And There's payroll no taxes is a separate line item. So it should be a direct, you should just be able to take an average oh, yeah, yeah, wage yeah, yeah. and figure it out. So they're not covering the shift from midnight to eight, right? All no, the time. We, we try and we yeah. try and have two people in the house twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, I know that that was uh, your that was your goal. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just suggesting if you do that, I just does somebody. Okay. Have a, I'm not very good at this. Yeah, yeah. If we multiply, let's. I'll just take twenty dollars an hour. Twenty dollars an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Times, times two. Times two. That's right. Forty dollars an hour. Times, times three sixty five. Oh, no, it's a thousand dollars a day. Oh, times twenty-four. That's right. You got times twenty-four. It's a thousand bucks a day. A day. Okay. A thousand a day, three sixty-five. Times three sixty-five. How much is that? Three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Three hundred fifty thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, you, yeah. Couldn't we knock that down then? Since you're asking for two seventy-four, actually you're asking for two seventy-five almost. Why do we need all that? Because you're paying some of them less. Well, yeah, and some, you don't well, some are more too. No, well, some are more, but the highest is 21, and that's a paramedic. So I took an average of 20, which I think is probably wrong. So no, why you're, couldn't you're right we? You're right on. Yeah, you're right on. So. Sorry, I'm. That's wrong. fine. So, so couldn't that number be more like what did you say? 350. 350. Yeah. Instead of 375. Yeah. Are there ever times there's more than two people on? No, but I also built this year into that was an increase. Because there again, we, we create salary line items and they become stagnant. That even I, as a, in my stipend, as long as I've been a member of East Montpelier, it's been $9,400 that's been split up by our formula system that we use. And it's been that amount as long as I've been a member, if not longer. And it doesn't seem increases. So this salary includes other stipends and... No, that, that, that's in the that's fire budget. Yeah, that's the fire budget. Yeah. This salary, all the salary is of people that they hire from me and the ambulance. And they're in the, in the building to jump in the ambulance when there's a call. And we moved to this, they moved to it, they had to because it's burning out volunteers, number one. Number two, the state requires more and more training all the time. So they, I mean, I understand how it works. They had to go to more trained people that they had to hire. And they're hiring them as cheaply as they can, but they still have to pay competitively, okay? And not only do they have to pay competitively, they're not on salary. If they're on salary, that line would be a lot more because then you'd have to pay benefits. So they're doing it as cheaply as possible and still getting good people in there. I, I'm sympathetic to what they're doing. But so would you agree, though, that an average of $20 an hour, two people? I mean, the, the math we just did is right. I, it's not How that, that it's not out of line. It's, it's what they have to pay. Yeah. Right. So, so they've put an extra 25000 almost in there. Right. Right. The, the point oh, is... Oh, I see what you're saying. They're asking for well, 375 some of them are more than 20 bucks. Yeah. And, right. yeah. Yes, Just, but a lot of them are less than 20 Yeah, bucks. but, okay, so our, our but, job's not really to hound them about no, the no. figures. I know, our, our, but when I asked I if you could get the amount down, Jay, I think it was, said, you tell us where. Yeah. So I started thinking. I mean, I couldn't do that right sitting there, but now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I think I found a place. Okay. 
I don't think issues? lowering is, anyone's salary is there is any overtime? overtime. There's lots of overtime. And there's also the, the fact that, again, we don't pay, we don't offer benefits to there. We are competitive, right. or, or there's competition out there. Um, because we don't have benefits, then people are going to go somewhere where they're going to, A, get paid more, and B, get benefits. So we end up with overtime on things. We increase the budget, and I'm not looking at the numbers right now, but we paid X number of dollars in, in salaries last year, which was significant. I think one of the things you have to think about is if we cut back on our salaries, cut back on our personnel, you may not get an ambulance with yeah. somebody on it, and you really have to think about that. If you were to do some research and see the different towns in the state and different towns across the country, you're going to see this isn't just us. This is a situation that's out there. It costs more to do what we do. It's not just training. It's not just salaries. It's time that's put into a number of things. Our, our medications cost more. Everything costs more. Fuel costs more. I mean, all these different items are in there. I, I'm afraid to cut back on our salaries um, because but we might end up cutting I'm back on people. And, and if I need an ambulance and I can't get it because I need to get one from Barry City or Barry Town or Williamstown because I don't have staff in house, I'm not going to be happy as a taxpayer. I'm not asking you to cut patient. back on salaries. I'm using the numbers you just gave me. Right. Well, you just mentioned cut back on salaries. Yeah. You think you have found a place, and I don't think that's the place where we can cut back. But Tom, I think if I heard, I think one thing is the overtime, right? I mean, that's part of what's in here is their point is if they're having to pay people overtime, that is going to drive that hourly rate. That is where the math won't work. Yeah. And there are times when we have calls where there's not, you may have two people on the truck. We might need two or three or four people on the truck. We have a, calls are a little more complicated than they used to be. And sometimes two people is not enough. Sometimes we need four people in that ambulance. And that happens more and more, I think. Um, and right now, we're calling in volunteer firefighters and folks to help us in situations um, because we need extra hands. And that's just the way the world is right now. We have a lot more older people. We don't get a lot of money back from Medicare and Medicaid. So population ages. Those are the yeah. insurance companies are going to pay us, and they don't want to give us a lot of money. So the percentage so. of of the money that they bill for could drop because they're serving older people that have Medicaid that doesn't pay well. Medicaid pays horrible. They're starting to pay less. So too. Tom had something they're to say, I think, down there. He had his hand up. Well, there's a lot of calls where there may be a paramedic on duty where we have to call in a paramedic because of the nature of the call. We still have to pay for that paramedic, and we don't get any revenue out of it whatsoever because we don't transport. Mm -hmm. That happens quite frequently. The other, the other item that, uh, the, Ian, right? Ian, uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, that could be throwing your numbers off is that uh, when we, we've hired you know, several new people recently, last few months, one of them is sitting right here. Um, and, and when they come in for training, we have a program where it's a 40 hour training program that they have to be paid for. Yeah. So, they, so we're running three people on, mm -hmm. on shift. Yeah. That we have to pay for three. And that's because I'm the one that's doing the payroll, and that, that actually can add up. Yeah, um, oh yeah. But these guys yeah. have got to get tr be trained yeah. when they come mm -hmm. in. We just can't let them go at it. They have right. to we used to train and not compensate them, and we got our hands slapped pretty good. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I want to I want to move to a couple of things uh, revenue on the revenue side. I got just a couple questions. On the billing for your ambulance carries, mm -hmm. there's no uh, inflation number in there built into that. You're always getting the same amount of money from year to year. But I don't understand. So inflation, say the inflation is three to four to five percent. The money that you take in from a carry is not gonna go up from five years ago? I don't think I can answer that. Nice friend. Because what you're saying is, yeah. in the equipment line, you need to have more money in your capital budget because equipment costs more money. Understood. But usually on the revenue side of things, inflation kicks in also, and you're getting more revenue on a percentage basis, just inflation. You should be getting in more money for the carries that you take. You would think so if the insurance companies are willing to give us that increase. I'm not sure they're going to do that. Well, Greg? So. We did get a 
thing from the state, you know, like through Medicare for extra money from the state. Yeah. And then you'll see on line item number 5535, there's a number that says $4,700. Well, that's what the state of Vermont taxed us for giving us an increase. Oh, right. The net. Over, you, yeah. the net. They gave us gave us a dollar and took about 65 cents back. Okay. okay. All right. So now the next question is you have contracts with Marshfield and Plainfield. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we had the conversation. And are you charging them on a per head basis? Per population, are you charging them a competitive rate with, say, another ambulance service that could be in the game? What are you, you know, the mythology behind that rate? Is that been straightened out? I really, honestly, I don't think I can answer that question because those are numbers that were created uh -huh. several years ago. Yep. And I know the powers to be back then. Yep. Truthfully, didn't share some of their calculations. That was a uh -huh. deal that kind of was done prior administration. Prior administration. I right. Understood. So do I, 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 I've been I've been do part I agree of that conversation. We're charging them. No, I don't. I think it, I think there's room to increase those charges. I do too. Truthfully, but I I am not part of that. I was not part of that contract yeah. nego negotiation. Right. But if I was doing the contract negotiation, I would find out what a competitive service would charge them. And I know it's by the population, and yeah. I know it's by the people that are in the town. Yeah. And then I would do some math and say, oh, if I really want the business, I'd charge a dollar or two less a head. Yeah. But I don't think that's what happened. Right. And I think that's a number that could be looked at. Yeah? So I think that's what we are going to do. Yeah, so we were actually talking about this just the other night. Uh, I certainly agree with you. Uh -huh. uh, it, as I say, what Albert alluded to, that this was done uh, outside of us. Yeah. Uh, this this, ne this yeah. negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, one of the issues that we're looking at is that we're within that contract period. Understood. So that it won't come due until next year. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but those issues that you just mentioned. Yeah. Are going to be addressed. But they need. We're in, we're in the pro. We're Understood. In the, Understood. But I thought I'd bring it up because I don't think it's been addressed. Right. Well, so. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and I certainly agree with what you're. Yeah. Saying. Yes, sir. And, but I guess I would. That's. I, I think it's a meaningful. It's meaningful that we've gotten to the point where we're willing to look at that and, and do the calculus there and and revisit it. That should. Yeah. Always be revisited on a fairly regular basis, you know. I, which is part of which I, which is what I appreciated about some of the previous presentations about call volumes and and demand. Yeah. One of my concerns about that is you can start increasing your rates and trying to get more competitive to try to bring in more revenue. And if they shop around their services and decide that they are no longer going to renew that contract, that then puts the full weight of the carrying the budget back on Callis and East Montpelier. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything other than it, if if that is a dialogue that as a group we're all <clears throat> trying to work towards, I I think it'd be worth thinking about how these interlocal agreements work out so that we are we are keeping everybody bound into the same budgets because if people can just pull out uh, or not renew their their contracts uh, in a way that makes the budgets balanced as best they can be then that can be that can have a significant impact on on the carrying costs for for yeah, under, under and, but but in Cal's. I'm I'm not disagreeing with anybody. No, no. So but, far, but, but they would in a contract negotiation. You find out what a competitive uh, operation would charge them. I hear. You. And then you know you negotiate. Hey, we're a little bit under, but I think we're a lot under right now. Mm -hmm. If you figure out, I mean, I know what the figures are, roughly, and it's a lot under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would just say that if we're going to be discussing any particular contracts and anything more than the most general terms, that we should consider going into an executive session. We're not doing that. We're not. No, I'm we're not, not talking specifics. That, yep. We're talking generalities. Very good. So, anyway. So okay. the contracts that we've been talking about will be coming due in 2025, uh -huh. and we'll have to send a letter out. Uh huh probably July of this year uh -huh. to inform them so that we uh -huh. can start talks by September. Yeah. 
I think that um, we talked about this before, uh, about the contracts being done with select boards being part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Now, whether it could be a representative from the select board to be part of the contract talks, whatever. We talked about this years ago. Um, I just think that it's, uh, it's an important contract that should be negotiated carefully. Then they, yeah. they make a motion or something that one selectman from East Bob Pier and Callis join us when we start this process in next September. No, what, wait. <laughs> yeah. What's that? What's, yeah, hold up. Hold up. What's the what? Well, they're going to want to be involved in your contract, too. Plainfield will say, well, we want to be involved in how much East Bob Pier contributes to the budget. I don't think so. Sure, they could. Because you're, you're doing it to them. Can't go, can't go one way. Yeah. <laughs> So and let's 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 back off on that yeah. motion. You you think Marshfield or some town would want to be part of our? Sure. It would be unfair to say we'll do the. We need to go there, but you can't come here. So I think that's a conversation for I'm another day. Not so day. sure about that. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's not about. We may me. have to get into executive session later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. That would be a conflict. It's not a conversation even to have until okay. next July. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. So the time frame is July of 2024. When we're going to approach them about the new intro locals. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess let's circle back around to any money that we want to put in that adds the 15,000 or not, or take out the 15,000. What does everyone want to do? Now, I think the reason that we had this conversation so we all understood what was happening with the budget. Are we clear? No. No, that's okay. <laughs> I want to know more about the capital fund because the rest of the money goes into the capital fund. Exactly. Well, so could we talk about that for Okay, a let me just make one comment about that. Okay. You have to fund the contingency fund first if they drew money out of that. That has to be satisfied up to the forty thousand dollars. You said it's already full, though. So it's full right this now. Year they're not but I'm just saying, in the future, Albert. So the contingency, we used to tap it throughout the year, and then I think it was one meeting we had with the select boards, and they said you really shouldn't be doing it that way. That contingency is a year-end thing. If all of a sudden you find yourself you can't pay X dollars worth of bills because you know a budget is the best guess. I really have no clue what I'm spending next. Once yeah. we approve this budget, what we're spending at the end of June of 2025? Yeah. I have no clue. So it's a best guess what it's going to take to operate this department. Yeah. And so in the event we're short because whatever, all these expenses go up, we have the contingency as our insurance plan. So if we have to take 10 grand from that to close out the year and be neutral, zero, we do that. Then the following month, when we get our ambulance revenue, it's a 25-75 split. 25 yep. goes to contingency, yep. 75 goes to capital. Once we build that back up to 40 grand, all the money goes to capital. But no longer didn't I understand Seth to say, and you tell me if that's right, that the contingency fund is already full, so you don't need any from this year's? It is right now. Right. So you don't, don't need any from this year's? Well, we might. We don't know. They're not until the end of the year. Because, because you do it at the end of the year. The fiscal year ends June 30th. Oh, okay. We're halfway through it. I see. Right. They may not tap yeah, into the may not. But they, the way Albert said it is every month, 25% yeah. would go into Thank contingency, you. 75 in the capital. But they haven't had to do that for a while. Not since for a few years. Yeah. Okay. So, getting back to the fifteen thousand, or fifteen thousand, or twenty thousand. Could I hear how much is in the capital fund? I think it's here. Yeah. That's uh, a good it's idea, about. Uh, let's see. That is. Is that the two hundred and thirty-three thousand? Two twenty. Two thirty-three, right? Four thirty-three. Two thirty-three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and. Let me, do I understand the process when you want to buy new capital equipment is you buy it out of this, you don't go to the towns and ask for a bond? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. This is, That's okay. What I'm... Let, let's talk about that. Yeah, please. Okay. On the fire truck that they just bought, it was 450000 okay? So um, what they decided to do, first they came to the select board, 
they decided to pay for um, 250 yourselves. Yeah, they decided to take, but they don't. They don't. They're not going to spend that money out of their capital plan. They're going to make. They're going to borrow that, and they're going to make payments out of their capital money. Okay, the two hundred thousand dollars that they are asking the towns for, East Montpelier gave them some, and Cowles is giving them some. Okay, that's just a decision that they made in conjunction with the select boards. They said, well, this is what we'd like to do, and we feel this would be um, acceptable to you. They're diplomatic. They don't want to spend all the money, the 450000 in finance the whole thing. They thought it would be fair if the towns contributed some money also. I'm sorry, you're losing me because you're throwing out numbers. Okay, <laughs> okay. Following. All right. Um, so, so they decided that the towns could pay the 200000 they were going to pay the two fifty. This is for the truck. That for the truck that they're buying right now. Okay. Right. And the towns each had a, did a bond for two hundred thousand. No, no. The, well, I don't want to get into your personal finances, but okay, so we had like, the money in our capital plan to pay the hundred and whatever it was, one hundred and thirty-five thousand. Paid it out of your capital. Yes. So the, did. We paid two thirds of the remainder of the truck. Right. The two hundred thousand dollars that they did not have. Yeah. They asked for the towns. We're paying 135 of that, and you're paying 65. Right. Okay. We've already more or less paid our part. Oh, that's the 60 we did. That's you right. Pay that? Did you pay that? <laughs> no, we've paid our share, but I don't want to get into your finances and say <laughs> you pay your I share. Know. But you told me at the last meeting <laughs> the you hadn't paid it yet. I'm not yeah, sure. <laughs> we have a loan. We are paying 16 a year through 29. They, so they, so you guys took out a loan. We just paid our share. Okay. Okay, but we put it to the town voters by Australian ballot. Do you want to pay X amount of money towards the fire truck? And the voters said yes. So in the future, when they have huge expenses, they could ask the towns for part of the money. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. Or they could say, we'll finance the whole thing, and they've done that before. So they're pretty flexible on capital purchases, but anything over 25000 they have to come to the select board and, and talk to them about it and Sorry, ask them. anything over how much? 25. 25,000, yeah. okay. Yeah. Paul? Okay. I need to follow up on a couple of things. Okay. Um, number one, for the two administrators, administrator yep. here? Yeah. For Cowboys? Yeah. Um, Gina. I called, I called um, last week about getting you a, a bill from towing. Uh, that has not come through to me yet. Um, so I was going to type one up for you and so to get it to you. And it is you as well. Mm -hmm. We'll be needing that um, probably in two to two to three weeks. So I don't know how you want to. If you if you want to just send it to Toyn, you can send it to. We can send it to you. I mean, we can just cut a check to you. Yeah, that would then, be better. Then you could pay Toyn yeah. when you need yeah. to. So that'll be. I'll I'll send that off to you uh, this week. Yeah, if you yeah, gave that, that to me bills. this week, that's great because we could yeah. cut. We will cut checks on Monday yeah. for the select yeah. board meeting, so I would have that check ready for yeah. you. So it'd be Tuesday more of a request uh, for that money, yeah. versus a letterhead with toying, like yeah, a glass that's fine. Time for, for that's, you. I mean, we know we yeah. know what the amount right. is, so yeah, we've already you approved to send the me, amount. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. even if you just sent me an email, honestly, Paul, that's okay. fine. I yeah. could print that out and. So it'd be just yeah. for a request yeah. you know, for that money. And I'll yeah. do the same for Catalyst. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just also to follow up on this capital uh, capital money. Yeah. Um, you did say a couple of things in there that um, I need to let you know what we've decided as a board okay. to fund this truck, our, our part of the truck. Yeah. We've decided to to take a loan for 150. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 150. We were going to take a loan. Yeah. And then put the difference in from the capital. Yeah. Take it uh, cash yeah. from the capital. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the um, just to let you know that what, yeah. what we're doing. Okay. It will be a seven-year uh, note for 6.5. Yeah. Which is not too bad. Yeah. 22. For seven years of. So, so Ann, are you clear on the capital I think I got capital it. plan? Yes. Thank yeah. you. For okay. So, so yes, Paul. One more thing. Just a. Hopefully this will ease you, some of your minds. I was reading the Barry Town Select Board meeting yep. minutes from J uh, December. Yeah. They just purchased a truck. Yeah. For eight hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars. Yeah. And we just purchased it for four fifty. Yeah. And what are their bids? They had for the same truck was one point one million. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of equipment that's out there. But but you realize they're serving a lot of people. 
So we're trying to spread our costs over a lot fewer people. Well, no, as far as the purchase of yeah. the truck. I, I, I know. A truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's what a truck is. Right. Truck is a truck. Right. So we're, we're trying to keep this thing down Good as far thing. as the purchase of the overall yeah. purchase of that truck. Yeah. They're trying to, you're yeah, trying we didn't to. We did go to way up here. We yeah. went down here. But, but something to remember, it's like a big barn with few cows in it. It's like you've got a lot of overhead and you've got to spread it out over as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot more population to serve and more people to draw off. Mm -hmm. So that's just yeah. what happens. Yeah. So I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just, I'm just saying it's trucks. a lot. We have a lot of overhead. Yeah, yeah trucks are expensive. Yeah. We have a lot of overhead for the population. Yeah. So it's like me trying to pay my bills with 10 cows. Okay, well, I can't do it, so I got to book 300. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so any more questions? I think we've made a lot of progress about understanding how the finances work. So the question is, the reason do you want to increase that 15,000, which is coming off the top of the ambulance revenue, to at least the 12, to at least the 12, or just call it another 15, which is what I proposed to start with, which Paul said, corrected me, said, well, we're only asked, we're only doing 12. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> understood. Well, we move, we move 12 over. Yeah. You move 12 over into the, into the ask, so to speak. So, can I say something? Before, yeah, you sure can. Before we go for any further. <laughs> One of the items, I think, that, in, that put the increase in the budget yeah. over that double digit yeah. was dispatches. Yeah. And I'm sorry. So I know. It was the dispatches. 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 Which, okay. which we have no control over. Understood. And yeah. what we did was some of it was it was off it was off out of out of balance mm -hmm. yeah the amb ambulance or the fire was absorbing a lot of it mm -hmm. so we made it level mm -hmm. so if we go back the other way it's going to drop that below it's it going to move it to the fire right the fire is gonna so you're, you're not going to see that double digit increase yeah so it's it's, it's just a shell game right exactly right, right. yes paul i two mean items, greg sorry two items between the dispatch and our insurances, those two line items is over the hardware. Yeah, that you have to spend. Yep. Yeah. 110 or 115,000. Yeah. The two line items. Yeah. So if we if we ask for another 15,000 off the top of the ambulance revenue, the only thing that's going to affect is their um, capital. That's it. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you're so vocal. I was talking to someone the other day, and that fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. okay, over the next five years, mm -hmm. is going to take away a new uh, utility truck for from us. Uh -huh. That's what it's going to cost. Yeah, you're just taking that away from us. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's, that's how I, that's I won't how say it. what I would usually say when someone says that to me. I'll be polite. <laughs> okay. but, no, but I just want to express to you how this. I know how, how it works. The, uh, uh, yeah. the capital count works. Yeah. It's n it was never intended to pay the I, operating cost of the department. It was okay. Let me correct you on that because I've been part of this a long time. Mm -hmm. When this was sold to the town, I'll never forget. Larry Brown came in here. I was on the planning commission. He said, this is a no-brainer. All the ambulance revenue we're going to take in is going to pay all the expenses. Oh, OK. That was, that was how it sold to the town. It got passed, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, that's not going to do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I, I let me, let me correct something on that. Yeah. It was supposed to pay, it was supposed to pay for, the, for the new building. OK. It was going to take, it was going to pay for all of the expenses, or all of the purchase of the new building. Oh, yeah? Okay. We were then advised, uh, as found out by attorneys, that was illegal. Yeah. So they come up with the agreement that the towns would pay for the budget. Yeah. And the revenue would pay for capital. Yeah. Well, anyway. Okay. And or uh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Whatever. No. Uh, um. I just, for me, I still, I think of like when you were talking about the numbers for the new town garage last yeah. week. And that's just going to add seven cents per hundred. Well, I, that was just rough figuring on my I, head. I get it. That's yeah. a rough figure. But when you look at the money we're asking for, what's that going to add per hundred to your tax bill? Well, Half a penny? 
not very much, well, right? Yeah, yeah but you know, I, could, I could add to that. This this year in particular, we have sat down with our budget and we've been counting the thousands of dollars to cut from this year. Yeah, and so. Yeah. I think that I, I don't want to discredit anybody's con yeah. contribution tonight. You know, we're it, it standing standing by itself as as a budget item. Sure, that positioning is is a fair consideration. We're talking about cents, but we've been looking at the accumulation of cents this year yeah. in a way that, like, some towns are looking at twenty percent increases in their in their town budgets from last year. We've been we've been fortunate to whittle ours down over some pretty painstaking conversations of the things that we're not going to be funding this year and 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 cutting out things with handshake agreements saying we'll we'll revisit it next year and and I think that's kind of the nature of of, of why we're having this conversation. Absolutely, every one of these towns right now is looking at some really hard conversations and and completely valid point about about the payroll expenses and, and needing to pay for the talent that you need to operate, you know, that that is fair. But you know, we're just trying to have a, a workable conversation around where we might be able to, to save some money this year um, because we're the ones who are gonna have to stand in front of the towns and say, this is why it's 18%, this is why it's 17%, even if it's 12 or 8%, like, it all adds up very yeah, well. We're Basically, we're talking. You're right. We're talking pennies, but we got we we talk pennies every day. Gina, our administrator here, she's working. Seth, can we cut this out? There's a few hundred dollars. Blah 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 blah. You know, we're whittle whittle whittle. You know, we're doing the best we can. You saw Montpelier's um, meeting they had the other night. They're they're arguing about 3.2 percent or 3.7 percent. You know, they're trying to tie it to the inflation rate. Their budget. So anyway, that's just. Well, I just for me, I feel. This is just me personally. That what we provide is I consider an essential service. True. That yeah. if, if there comes time where money is tight mm -hmm. and the fire department's asking for a hundred and any other organization's asking for money, we take from them and give it to the fire department because mm -hmm. it's essential. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying we can't trim some money here and there. I'm <coughs> sure we can. And I'm trying to have the most open door, open book, no secrets, no numbers hidden, no double books where, oh, these are my real numbers, but this is what I'm showing the town. You know, and I, I really want to be out there because I want you to see and understand what we go through day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge, it really is. And, you know, we're the only organization of all the departments that has to contribute our money back in to fund ourselves. Do, do the sheriff's department, whatever you pay them a year, do they? Do you sit there and say, well, can you contribute 15 grand towards that 75 you want us to fund? Or the library uh, committee for them? We're the only department in between these towns that actually gives money back because we understand, we feel the pain. But mm -hmm. we're also the ones that really, most of, a lot of us volunteer. And we run into burning buildings and I don't ask for a penny for that, you know? And it's just, it kind of, I hate to say it, it burns me mm -hmm. to sit there and think over pennies that we got to give up something for pennies when mm -hmm. we were walk into burning buildings and try and save lives. Or through COVID, everybody staying home, be safe. Mm -hmm. And we're charging into homes, dealing with sick people, that if we slip one little thing we forget, it could be our death sentence. And what do I get in return? Can you save me $10,000 on my budget this year? Unfortunately, we have to have conversations about budgets. We represent 2,500 people in this town. They expect us to have these conversations. And I'm sorry that you would take it personally because we're not trying to make it personal. We appreciate what you do every single day. But the same it's always been brought up to us when we talk about budget that you guys are saving our lives. We understand that and we appreciate that. But we're also in another position being answerable to a lot of people. So we have to have the conversation. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. So, yes? So we've talked a fair amount about rising costs for various things and uh, inflation in general. 
and uh, just to put some perspective into these figures that we have for the East Montpelier contribution, which is proportional to the Callis contribution, mm -hmm. then I went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and found a, an inflation calculator there. And uh, you're absolutely correct in nominal dollars, Seth, that it's just over a three times increase from 2014 to 2025 proposed. Uh, if you run it through the inflation calculator, then the 95.5 from 2014 is worth 125,200 in uh, in 20 at the end of 2023, uh, which is the most recent time that they had inflation calculated for. Um, so, which is basically now. So, uh, with that, then the rate of increase total is uh, 2.35 times instead of three times, which you know it, it's uh, over a little over 10 years. Is it sustainable for the town? So that's still a very steep rate of increase, but it's it's less than three, and I wanted to just get that out there in the record. Okay, so let's circle. Yes, Ann. Um, I just want to go back to what you said about we're taking away a, a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I, I need to understand that better because from what the discussion we just had about how the capital equipment works, there are lots of other ways you could get the vehicles. You could ask us for the money when you're ready to buy the vehicle. You could ask us to, to ask the town to float a bond or to take a loan. Yep. So I, I don't think we're taking well, I, away. I, think, I, I, I just have to yeah. feeling I, that that's right. I think when the what Seth alluded earlier about Larry Brown, which I, I was not on the board then. Well, it's okay. Yeah. It's just but history. Yeah. And it's not important, the, really. The, the intent of the capital account, the way it's working now, is that that's what is supposed to fund our capital equipment, and not and so we're not going to the taxpayers for. Uh, these other items, like a smaller one, like a, the seventy-five thousand dollar truck that we right. talked about, utility yeah. vehicle. Or he, they would have the money put in, yeah. like we do. The town does the same thing. Yeah. We yeah. have a capital plan, so we can pay cash for something. You know, if it's a huge item, then it's going to be different. Yeah. But. So you so got air bottles that are be coming up. They need to be replaced. We wouldn't be going to the town saying, "Hey, yeah. we need forty-five thousand dollars for air bottles." Right. We're going to be. But if you, if we keep taking that off out of the out of that account every year. Yeah, we're going to be taking at the end of the year. You're going to be taking quite a bit. You're going to be taking got, thirty thousand dollars out of it. But you've got two plus plus a, a paramedic. Two hundred thirty-three thousand in there. Well, you won't. After we're, after they got to pay one fifty. I'm going to take one fifty out of it. Right. So yeah. you'll you'll right. have. But and it but, does build up yeah. fairly quickly because they've taken one sixty, one seventy a year, and it could be even yeah. more this year. Yeah. So all we're saying is, put a little less in this year. Exactly. Right. Well, that's what we're saying. Yeah. Put a little less in there. And it's temporary. It could be just this year. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Because the point of me putting this out to 15000 is I want everyone to understand this is something that we asked them years ago. They keep putting it in there, but they don't have to. And we don't have to ask them of it. Or we could ask them for more It's or less. It's a discretionary item. Mm -hmm. So So this year we don't want to pay that 15000 <laughs> okay, so, so okay, so there's another go around, Albert, and I don't want to. I, I I could say this, and I don't want to play the shell game, but we could, we could approve the budget, in East Montpelier for ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars less than you asked for, yeah, yeah. and then you are going to have to tighten your belts and be annoyed and take money you, out of the did, contingency you did that fund. A couple years ago. Yes, you did we've that done a couple years ago. Yes. Please. <laughs> the bad part about that is you didn't come to our face and tell us that. But well, this is out. different right yeah. now because yes. I wanted this meeting to be transparent and everyone to be on the same page, even though people make it annoyed. We're not trying to do anything behind anybody's back. It's right out here in front. The bottom line is whatever you folks decide to do, exactly. we pretty much have to accept it. Yes. Because yes. if we lose any bit of money from mm -hmm. any one of you, mm -hmm. we're basically out of business. Well, you're not out of business because you have a contingency fund. So that was the point of saying. Well, what if, I'm saying yeah. is. I know. Right. In other words, we we yeah. I'd say we gotta. You, you're sleep in the same bed. You're dependent. Bottom line. So <laughs> we depend you know, on you like you depend. on I know. Okay. So mm. we're all good on that. Okay, Zoe. I'm new and I'm young and I'm ignorant, um, but I was having some thoughts about the general direction that it seems like. 
um, the situation is heading in, not even locally, but nationally. Um, I was really struck by what you were saying about the declining reimbursement for Medicaid and Medicare, oh, the aging population in our towns, um, the rising expense of everything, the difficulty in retaining young, able-bodied workers. And I'm wondering if it would make sense to um, somehow start, I, I feel like if our, like, if the public was educated in terms of how hard it is to make these systems work, even maybe gradually, it seems like people would maybe eventually warm to the idea of having taxes increased. It's because it, it faced with a um, question of, do you want a fire department or not? Do you want ambulances or not? I think most people would rather pay a slightly higher tax than maybe be faced with like, like trying to make a Kickstarter online to get an ambulance to come to their house. Maybe not like for this year, but it seems like it's gonna, this is not gonna necessarily get easier. Um, it just seems like. Okay, well, there are different options, but we're not here to talk about that, about ambulance service. We're just trying to keep the ambulance service going and trying to keep the projected increase down a little bit. Right. So we're not trying to put them out of business. No, no, no. Just but there are going other forward options. With there are other options when it comes to ambulance service if we so choose to explore them. Okay. So we're not going there right now. Okay. We are trying to keep everything together as we view it. And the purpose of the meeting is just to talk about this contribution that we asked for over the years, the 15000 or 20000 or 30000 that I think that we need to narrow our focus right now. Yes, Paul? So just another uh, thing to throw out. Got your chat. <laughs> to be thinking about. <laughs> uh, an easier way to do it, yeah. um, that, that in, my, in my mind, about this con taking money out of the con contingency, uh, as far as what, how everybody views that. Well, no, we're, we're, we don't yeah. want to take it out of the contingency. No, so but it is a tool. Not the, con the uh, capital. Yes. So why don't we just go back to the way we used to do it, have the ambulance billing or proposal to you to think about is is have the ambulance billing pay for um, the, the, the the ambulance revenue pay for the ambulance billing out of the budget. Okay, so the reason that you put that in there was it's a pain in the butt that we have to every month make transfers to do that. Right, and so that's fine the way you're doing it. You're yeah. it's transparent that's yeah. in your budget now. Okay, but. We should be asking you for more money out of the ambulance revenue on the back door of it. So that covers it. That's all. Then you, so, so the 15000 could be 27000 or whatever. And that covers the money that you're not putting, taking out of the ambulance revenue anymore. Well, it it just covers it the, a different way. Cover it. Why don't you just cover the ambulance bill? It's what, $1,000. Yeah, but I was trying to cover your ambulance uh, Med, uh, med, um, paramedic yeah. services. Well, you're taking away more money. You're that's okay. From it's not getting it to us. Yeah, that's so, okay. I'm saying that's okay. I'm just rounding of, it up. Instead of the 50, I'm just rounding it up. It up. We're trying to bring it back down to where it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I'm just trying to be somewhat aggressive about addressing this. So we're going to meet you in the middle. Take oh, well, okay, we'll see. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I want to hear from the Calus Slick Board yeah, on this okay, question. Yeah, because you're, you're increasing the yeah, expenses out of the I know. I, know. They, I think they're under the impression that you make. They may not think you're doing that. Oh, yeah. I think they do. I don't, they're not dumb. Yeah, they well, know what I'm doing or trying to I don't do. Know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. You understand where we're going? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty, pretty easy. We're just asking for 15000 more. And they're 15 that are already contributing out of the ambulance revenue. They take in 160, 170. They've taken in 97,000 dollars the last six months. So hopefully the next six months they take in another 97,000. Who knows? But they're annoyed that we're doing that. Correct? Yeah. So there you go. So what do you folks? What would you folks like to do? I think their budget was very trimmed and sparse and they tried to keep it as tight as possible uh -huh. walmart starts people at 18 dollars an hour they're paying uh -huh. paramedics 21 no benefits yeah, yeah. you know it i'm not questioning like, is there like a personnel and yep. they need yes. resources to mm -hmm. put towards new use things mm -hmm. and 
I just, I don't feel it's an area, it's an essential service, so. Um, okay. And that can. Anne, what do you think? I think, to echo what Jordan said, we worked really hard to get our budget down to mm -hmm. about 7% increase. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking us for over a 12% increase yes. in the ambulance budget. Yep, correct. And it does seem to me that we're not asking them to reduce any services. We're just asking them to look on the capital side and be a little more creative. Maybe it means you're gonna to have to take out a loan. Maybe it means we're gonna to have to go ask the town for a little bit more at some point, but we're not trying to starve you. Yep. We're trying to, to bring a reasonable budget to our voters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're struggling too. They're having a really hard time this year. There are people out there who are really hurting. Mm -hmm. And we're doing our best to keep the budget down. And it mm -hmm. seemed, I, what I would hope is that we could get your budget down to 7% would be great. That's what we're going for. I'm not going to ask you to do that. But I don't, it, taking 15000 out of your capital fund, I just, I, I'm, I'm not hearing that that's going to be a horrible hardship right. for you guys. Yeah. So we're going to increase my proposal which annoys everybody on the fire department ambulance service is to raise the 15,000 to 30,000. So they would take 30,000 out of the 160, 170 and put that into their general budget. That was my thought. And it's not a permanent thing. We can change it next year. Yes? Can we keep that billing line item that for the 12,000 in that budget? Yes. That? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. 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 Of course you would. Yeah. You've already committed to that, I feel, okay. and that's fine. It's, yeah. it's an easier for you to put that in your budget. Mm -hmm. It's easy to take the ambulance revenue and put it back in. That's the easy. So that, that's my thought. Yours, yours Mr. Edmund? Sure. As a member of the <laughs> board? <laughs> I'll support that. <laughs> All right. So. And yes, I, I concur with everything you just said. I um, w would be comfortable with moving it to 27 instead of 30 to mm -hmm. be a sort of even switch. So it, it seems to me that 12,000 came out of the revenue last yeah. year anyway. And so switching right. it back, yeah. giving it back to us is it's sort even. of an even yeah. keel. Um, and yeah. so... I'm just, you know, reading. whether we're I'm 12 not, or Yankee, 15, I'm a Yankee trader. I, I, I don't have strong <laughs> feelings on the 12 or 15, but I do think that, you know, it's a year that we're all tightening yeah. the belt and yep. it's got to be everybody. It's not permanent. And every, every segment of our budget, we went through line we're by doing, line. We're doing the same thing. Cut $100 here, cut $500 yeah. there. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So, Ann, do you want to do it to 12 or do you want to do the 15? I, I would just assume do the 15. Me but too. I, Me too. I'm not going to fight No disrespect that. to you, man. I, I'm fine with the 15. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, don't, okay. I don't right. have Jordan? This is Jordan? strong feelings. Yeah. Yeah. You're comfortable with that? <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with, uh, with either of them. Okay. Um, well, I'm looking at the budget. <laughs> <laughs> this is my tool. I'm one of the younger guys. You can read that. <laughs> yes. This is our tool. He's live tweeting, man. I got one of those too. I'm not. I'm not recording or live tweeting or doing any of that. Um, my understanding, Seth, then with, with that is that uh, we're not proposing any any cuts to, to change to the budget. Budget, we're just right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. the budget. That's a tricky territory when you start entering all these figures. Yeah. They're exactly. guessing. We're guessing. Right. No. I, I mean, I. I'm not. In favor I appreciate. Of that. No, I, yeah. I I appreciate that. And I know they've done a lot a of last, work. That's a last minute. Yeah. All that would put anybody in a tight situation. And, they, and they've done a lot of work. Yeah. So we have to trust them. Yeah. And I, yeah. I know that you know, we're trusting. All we're doing is asking for the annual revenue to go into the top line, the 15000 And I think that's, I mean, for me, I think that's what we should do. But I'm asking for everyone's opinion. 
Um, so I want to be on the same page. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm curious about one other thing. Um, yeah. Since we're all in the room, I guess uh, there's a comment made that um, there are certain ways that funds from the towns could be contributed to various various things, uh, like like the building and that. You know, legal input was that that was a, a legal that the funds from the towns had to be going toward operating expenses only, or or can they go toward anything? Well, I think the revenue uh, ambulance revenue. Uh, was was not legally because it was a town bond. Yeah, we couldn't pay for that bond. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And we got that bond during the 2008 depression recession, and nobody thought we'd ever get bonded. I mean, we'd get a get a building through the taxpayers. Yes. Yeah. Right. Period. Yeah. I mean, so. It actually was Okay. Albert. Just one other thing related to capital. Yeah. It's something I'm putting out to both towns to yeah. think about. As the building is aging yeah. and the building requires capital upkeep. Um, and like one thing I found out, I was looking at paperwork that the town of East Montpelier has funds set aside in the capital for the emergency services building. And as an example, our well pump failed two years ago, and we paid for it out of our pocket. The sewer lift pump failed, I think, last year. We paid for it out of our pocket. But those would have been probably capital um, expenses, repairs for the building. Yeah. And how, how we do that going forward, because those were small ticket items, but if the roof has to get replaced in two years, how... What portion does the town pay versus the fire department versus? Well, the town owns the building, so they probably yeah. have to pay for it. Yeah. That's the yeah. short answer. Okay. Yeah. The town owns it. All right. That bill would be split two thirds, one third, because Calus owns one third of the building. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, to me, that was a bad decision for Calus to buy real estate. In East Montpelier, <laughs> I don't know where they're going to head with that, but uh, we did mention the fact a few years ago that we could assume that responsibility, that fiscal responsibility, a part of that bond. But they were resistant to that thought because they thought there was a lot of value there that they were giving up in the ownership of the building. But so that's what that's at. <laughs> There any, uh, yeah, exactly. We're not going to talk about that anymore. But anyway, because um, the towns own the building together, they would ha they would come up with the big ticket items. But there's no doubt about that. Yeah. So we need a motion, probably. What, Greg? So you, you, so you the consensus, you guys are going to go up from 50 yeah. to 30. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Should we make a motion? Um, a star what? motion to make. Yeah. Yeah. What's the motion? It's that the on the budget we're gonna ask we're gonna ask them to put thirty thousand dollars in ambulance revenue into what, their general budget. In, in East Montpelier, we will be taking care of. Oh yeah. All, you know, at, at the next meeting. Next okay. Meeting, yeah. yeah. So consensus. So at our meeting, we'll we'll yep. take out five thousand from their ask, yep. and you'll take out ten. Yep. Okay. 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 Now we wanted the, the other thing on the agenda. Was the, um, the local agreement, or what was that? That was uh, discussion on potential amendments to the interlocal agreement between East Montpelier and Cal's East Montpelier Fire Department. Don't look at me, because I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rose, and, I have a paper copy of this. And one, you can't, so I don't think you can make a change now. You have no, to give them no, the notice. Not going to ask okay. to make a change. Okay. You know. Okay. Um, and and this is probably something we should just have a conversation about at some point. But yeah. I will tell you, I finally went back and found all the old agreements, okay. and, and um, which hadn't been on file in the town office, but I managed to get them. I guess Gina got sent them to us. And Jen, yeah, and um, I was able to follow how it got changed over the years. Yeah. Um, which made me a little more comfortable with it. But I think what happened was two issues got confused. The very original contract, that provision was about one thing and one thing only. It was about if you want to get out of this contract, what's the process? Okay. 
And the process was, which this was in the original contract, you have a chance once every five years. The contract's for five years. If at the end you want to leave, yeah. then you give us at least one year's notice, and okay. then you walk. Then in 2013, for some reason, they changed that to now you have a chance to do it every year, and you yeah. only give us five months' notice. Okay. Then in 2021, you dropped that to three months' notice. So that means if Callis decides that we don't want to do this anymore, yeah. all we have to do is tell you, yeah. give us back our third, and we walk out in three months. I, yeah. think, I think that's probably not how we want to do this. But what happened, seems to have happened is there was never any provision for how to make amendments to the contract. So in 2013, everybody decided to mush the two together. Oh. And, and that's why it got written in this strange way. So I think what we should do is make, and it's very unclear to me when I read this, what this says. And, and different people seem to have different interpretations of it. I think we, what we ought to do is have a discussion about what do we want to do if you want to walk? Okay. And what do we want to do if you want to amend and have two different processes for those things? Because I don't think they should be so the same. So one process now, what you do is you say non-renewal 90 days before the anniversary of the contract. Yeah. And then you have the chance to make the amendments in that period. But it's the same process for we say, okay, thank yeah. you very much. Give us our third back. We're leaving. And I don't think you want that. I think you want at least a year. Are you sure? It, well, maybe you, maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> you could do the same thing to us, and I don't want that. <laughs> okay, so I understand what you're saying. So um, I'd just like to clean but that up. But one of the reasons that they, not to defend the actions of the previous select board, whatever, one of the reasons they put that in there is they wanted the ability to review it every year. It forced them to, it wasn't an automatic renewal. Well, that's one of the things I don't understand here. What do they mean by review it? They say it shall be reviewed every year. Yeah. What, what does that mean? It means you read it over, and if there's things you don't like about it, then you have the chance to change it. I can do that anytime I want. No, but you don't have the opportunity to do, you know, well, the, that's you have that 90 day window. Let's just no, I mean, because I was part of that conversation. But I did tell you that before, that Cal's took like six months to decide what they wanted to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're like, what are they, what are they doing? We don't yeah. know. Okay. Well, and, and I think the, the other challenge there is that if you, if you just put it in there and say that it's three months upon the renewal of the contract, and that makes it the same time every year, and the reality is these select boards are so busy with all of their other stuff that by the time somebody says, ah, it's three months before the renewal. Uh, well, here well, it is. Either consider it here in this three months, or and, and say what you want to change. Well, you're supposed and, to be right. saving it up, you know. It's like, right. Well, oh, June first. Okay, we're gonna right. do it. We've been except, saving it all year. Except then, a million other things come up, like a flood. Well, you gotta uh, look at that. <laughs> and so, and, and June first goes by, and uh, yeah, and, and I think provide to Anne's point, you know, providing a clear path for considering amendments. If we consider amendment that we want to change and have a conversation with East Montpelier or uh, right. either the departments about in December, um, we, we should have a mechanism for doing that that, yeah. isn't, that isn't associated with a potential for some sort yeah, of yeah. brinksmanship right. over whether or not we're renewing or not renewing um, and force people to the table because that's not going to be a productive conversation. There's always going to be a distraction, and we certainly don't want to be doing it in the middle of a in, in the mid middle of a budgetary process when we're all <laughs> wanting to have a more heated conversation about something else. So, um, Albert, yeah, I just uh, I, you changed my well, you didn't change my thought, but my thought was against what you just said. Um, oh no. My feeling is that a the date should coincide with fiscal year. First of all, I think it's silly to have your fiscal year end June thirtieth, but your contract goes to so September. September. Yeah. So A, the, the contract should negotiate or work with the fiscal <clears> year end. <throat> and the other part maybe becomes part of our agenda for discussions in December when we do budget presentations. Item number six, interlocal inter agreement. Any issues, concerns, comments. And you review it along with your with the budget for the fire department. If you got right. something to, some issue red flag you don't like, then we address it and... I think there's some you know? thought, though, of town meeting in there. It's like, you don't want to do it too close to the town meeting warning, you know, mm -hmm. because it doesn't really give you a lot of lead time to discuss. And because also, 
just the budget is now in callous it gets voted on the floor you know that was also part of the discussion when we talked about the interlocal agreement it's like do you really want to be negotiating this you know before town meeting it's like that's why the june july august thing happened because it's well after town meeting and then it gives you some time during the summer not so busy to talk about it so that's just how that happened you know, I wasn't in control of it. I just yeah. was part of the conversation. I know that's what some of the thoughts were. So anyway. I would like to invite you, Ann, to clarify what you were saying in terms of um, ending the contract and Callis taking us one third and walking. What, what were you thinking that that means? Um, they were just saying they could get out of it. That, that we, we've decided her, that, that we means. don't want to be part of this agreement anymore. So what's that one third that you'd be taking? Oh, we, one third of our equity. That's that's in, in the interlocal agreement. It yeah. says that if we dissolve the agreement, which is what we'd be doing, we yeah. take one third of the equity and you take two thirds. Well, see, that's that's what I thought you meant, and um, I read it differently. I might I be, might be wrong, but um, <laughs> okay. the East Montpelier Fire Department is oh, a private nonprofit organization okay. that was founded in 1964. Uh, the, section 14 of the agreement refers to the dissolution and liquidation of the East Montpelier Fire Department. What happens to its net assets? If Callis decides to withdraw from this interlocal agreement, then that does not necessarily mean that the East Montpelier Fire Department is going to dissolve. Yeah, I see. I'm looking at it, and um, that is where it says. Yeah. I'll have to go back and reread it more, okay. more carefully. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that sure. out. Sure. Well, we weren't going to cut your check for $100,000. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to cut the building into a third? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to get the building appraised as fair market value, considering that, you know, it's hard to sell public service buildings in East Montpelier, municipal <laughs> buildings. So the value might not be that much. But I'm just saying. It might be in East Montpelier. I haven't oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what else have you guys been putting behind the building? <laughs> anyway. Anything else? What? No. Oh, no? I'd just like to work on that. Maybe yeah. we can talk about it. That's so Perfect. Okay. Sure. Okay. We're not voting on anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we came to consensus, Greg. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Did you, did you have something else to say, Greg? No? All right. So, any other business? Because that's the next thing on the agenda. So usually at this point, one of us says something. So for the purpose of the East Montpelier <laughs> meeting, I move to adjourn. No, this is All the joint meeting. Zoe? All the joint meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Callis can do the same. No, no, no. no Callis decided that it's a joint meeting and <laughs> we have control. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Two-thirds. Okay, so thank you for coming. And, uh,